All right, we are back at Disney's Animal Kingdom theme park for the final segment in our amazing photography day at the theme park. Let's get back into the action right now. Okay, we are here now on the Maharaja Jungle Trek, which is a walking path that lets you see some wildlife. You can see tigers here, but the big deal for us is birds. The tigers are usually hard to see, and so we are heading into the bird area. A lot of times we don't see these. I think there's some form of gazelle on the Maharaja Jungle Trek. You know, sometimes you don't see the lions. Sometimes you don't see these. You always see the birds, but these were out, and I, and I did stop. Even though I was really excited to go see the birds, I stopped and made this photo at 363 and this one at 324 of these and one more at 324 of these two that were in much different light. Just really cute little, uh, there's some form of gazelle, I'm not, I'm not sure exactly what. So now we're in the bird aviary part of the Maharaja Jungle Trek, possibly my favorite part of the Animal Kingdom theme park. And this is, what kind of pigeon is that, Heather? It's a pied imperial pigeon. Really beautiful. You always see these at the Maharaja Jungle Trek Bird Aviary. And they're usually uh, sitting perched and peaceful like this one is. This beautiful bird is a Nicobar pigeon. I think I have a video clip of it as well as it walked along. I, I think this concrete area is the side of the fountain. One four hundredth and ISO 400 or 4000. So there's a little bit more light here than there was on the Gorilla Falls Expedition Trail Aviary. While I was making this video clip of the Nicobar Pigeon, I heard something that immediately captured my full attention. This is the great Argus Pheasant. Heather has a nickname for it. What do you call it? I call it the Woo Woo Bird. Because it makes this awesome sound. This bird is huge. And I started making photographs of it at uh, 1 400th. And as you can see, it's 25,600 ISO. And still 25,600 ISO and still 25,000, no, only 20,000 ISO for this one. And then I dropped my shutter speed down to 180th and got it to a more reasonable 6,400 ISO. And I was just making headshots of it, but I have a video clip of it making its woo-woo sound. It's awesome. Oh, look, it's another 5,000 ISO shot of the Argus pheasant. And this thing displays almost like a peacock, but uh, we, we didn't, we weren't fortunate enough to see it do its display while we were there, but I just love its woo woo. And I, th I think it's just a beautiful, I, I like this little part where its feathers do this little flip back here. Pretty cool. This is a common emerald dove. You always see these or usually see these on the Maharaja Jungle Trek. And uh, it was in a pretty dark area. I, was, I went down to 1 80th of a second and made this 4,000 ISO shot. This bird was absolutely beautiful. What's it called, Heather? It's a blue crowned laughing thrush. Just beautiful. I made a number of pictures of it um, kind of up in the canopy and I didn't like any of them, but I got a couple. This one at 2,000 ISO and 1 40th. And this one with the same settings when it was down on one of the bird feeders. And I was really happy with the way these two came out. There were several metallic starlings and a lot of them had bright sunlight on them. And I took photos of them and I just did not like the way they came out. But this photo was heavily backlit and there, were, there was not a lot of contrast in it. So I had to bump contrast and it's still not all that contrasty. But I like this picture way better than the ones in direct sunlight. I don't know why that is, but that is. One, one twenty-fifth and 2000 ISO. Metallic starling. This is the white crowned lapwing. I always see these every time I've ever been on the Maharaja Jungle Trek. And uh, usually they're kind of near the water feature at the beginning, but this one was kind of hiding in the woods when we went by. Um, but I was able to get this 10,000 ISO shot that I thought turned out pretty nice. This little bird is called a red-billed Leothrix. We think we might be pronouncing that right. It could be wrong. Beautiful little bird. I chased this thing all over the place and just struggled and struggled and struggled to get a photograph of it. And finally, uh, I found it on the ground uh, behind some foliage and it was feeding on some grubs. I guess they'd thrown some grubs out there and 
it's 20,000 ISO this shot. I took, I, I mean, I really struggled to get a picture of this bird, but you can see uh, there in its talons, you can see the grub that it was feeding on in this 10,000 ISO shot. And here's another one. This one's probably the sharpest one. Still has the grub in its little claw, 12,800 ISO on this. And I had, you know, I, a lot of times during this day, I slowed down to 140th, but this little bird bounces around so much, 140th was not anywhere near sharp. And most of the one 125th shots were not sharp. Uh, but every once in a while, I would catch it. And I was shooting 20 frames a second, just over and over, trying to get this bird. All right, you always see the big one here, the Victoria crowned pigeon. You always see them on the Maharaja jungle track. Um, but this time it was in an area just posing for me. And it had the, uh, what kind of partridge is that, Heather? It's a crested partridge. This is a crested partridge. Now, there was, I got a female crested partridge walking around in the butterfly garden in the Tennessee Aquarium back home. But this one's a male. And these two, I took a number of pictures of them. And uh, I started out at 1 125th. And the ISO needed was 25,600, as you can see. And I slowed down to 140th and got some photos with a little less noise than this. Although this one for that ISO doesn't have all that much noise. But the, the composition wasn't as good. Both birds facing kind of the same direction. So I shared the 25,600 ISO because I'd rather have a uh, great composition with some noise than a bad composition with no noise. Really like the way this picture turned out. I thought I would have plenty of time to make photographs of these golden crested mina, and so I made a video clip when I first saw them over here on this bird bath fountain combination. But as soon as they got done with their bath, they flew up into the very top of the Maharaja Jungle Trek aviary, and I never saw them again. No stills of these. Look, it's the woo woo bird again. I had to go back and get another shot of it, and this may be my favorite one. I slowed down to 140th, so the ISO is only 4,000, and I love the, um, the leaves of the palm tree or whatever that is in the background. Uh, kind of adds something to the shot, I thought. Well, what did you think about your first trip on the Maharaja Jungle Trek? Uh, it, this, I think this is the coolest thing I've done in probably 20 years. Oh, awesome. Well, I'm glad I'm not the only person that loves it. <laughs> no, I could do that all day. If we had a full day of doing nothing but that, I'd be happy. I'm in. Sign me up. Just let the birds poop on me and let's get going. <laughs> yeah, bird poop's worth it. We were going to go eat, and then we remembered that we haven't made photos of the animals of Discovery Island, and the sun's about to go down, so we are going to do some photography of the animals of Discovery Island. And then eat. This is some more of the 50th anniversary statues. There are 50 of these, not 50 statues, but 50 characters. And this one, we have Simba and Pumbaa and Timon. And even though the background is cluttered, I, I liked the light on this and thought it was worth making a photo of to share with you. This is a lesser flamingo that we photographed there on Discovery Island. Uh, you can see over here, this is the backside of the bird and it's completely out of focus. I was concentrating mainly on just its head and that amazing eye. So I made this one 400th of a second shot and here's another one 400th of a second shot. I think this is a different bird, but uh, I was going for the same thing in both of those shots. Now this shot, um, this is one that was a little bit further away and it was preening. And I love the way the, uh, it was getting to be almost golden hour and the light was beautiful, I thought, as it reflected on the water. And I made a video clip of this bird as well. This is a river otter. They have a nice river otter enclosure there that you can watch these. And of course we saw these as well at the Tennessee Aquarium. And we've also seen these in the wild in the Great Smoky Mountains National Park, Cades Cove. This is through the glass and it's thick. So uh, it's not as sharp as I would like. 10,000 ISO, 1 3 20th of a second and 500 millimeters. This is a vulture of some sort. I'm having trouble finding its actual species name, but it's uh, another one of the animals that you can see on Discovery Island, and there's no lines at, on these things. You just walk around and see them, where some of the other things, like the safari, there's a line. But these, you just walk up and take a look at the exhibit, and um, it is a 6400 ISO shot, 1 320th of a second. And this bird and its mate are featured on the 
Disney Plus uh, television program about the Animal Kingdom theme park and its animals. So make sure and check that out. Okay, so anytime you see a white ibis at Walt Disney World, even if you're at Animal Kingdom, it is not part of the show. It's just a wild bird that's hanging out. But I love white ibis. I think they're beautiful. And I enjoyed photographing this one with its beautiful blue eyes. That is a good sized catfish right there. I was thrilled to capture this video clip of this white ibis as it was bathing and preening and getting ready to go to sleep for the night. We came down here to the entrance area, kind of where you come in the front gate. And as you go up the hill, there's uh, several exhibits as well. And most of them uh, didn't have anything in them because it's January and it's really, really cold. And I guess it's too cold. But we saw lots of fabulous ducks, but it's getting so dark, I couldn't make photos. I had to make video clips because you can do video with less light. Uh, but I ended up making some video clips of these ducks swimming around and preening and, and uh, bathing that I really like, so uh, I hope you like them too. This beautiful Eurasian species is the red-crested pochard. This beautiful North American duck is a canvas back, and I'm not entirely sure if this duck is captive or if this duck is a free duck that just happens to be spending the evening at Walt Disney World. I didn't see any bands on either one of its legs, and the Disney World area is in its range for wintertime when this was filmed. Here is another Eurasian species. This is the red-breasted goose. Isn't it cute with its extremely short little bill? And now as we do basically every time we come to the Animal Kingdom theme park, we shall eat at the world's largest Rainforest Cafe. Rainforest Cafe was excellent. We really enjoyed it. And we are absolutely exhausted from so much photography here at one of our favorite parks of all of Disney World, the Animal Kingdom theme park. We appreciate you watching. Hope you enjoyed it. Give us a thumbs up. And as always, we look forward to seeing you in the next one. Say bye, Heather. Bye-bye.